Trade Professionals, we are back with another week of the Simply Trade News Roundup. Hi, Lalo. Hi, Andy. How are you guys? Good. Good morning. Good morning, Andy. I mean, Andy uh, and Anik. <laughs> <laughs> Andy and Anik. Yeah, both of us. Um, we hope you recovered from this weekend. Um, I think we did. Wait, when was Halloween? See, everything happened so quickly this week, I think. It, w- it was a weird week. Having Halloween and then what else? Oh, we had a holiday, a German holiday, but I didn't. But there was one. There's so many here, by the way. They have like holidays every other week. I swear. It's so weird. Yeah. Anyways, we are moving on to some articles. No surprise there because that's what we do on this podcast, right? So the first one, we're talking about some big money deals that are being made or that were made. So the article is the headline is U.S. Senator Schumer urges FTC to probe Exxon Chevron mega deals. So FTC, Federal Trade Commission, need to establish that. And so Chevron on Monday, at least in the article that I had read before that, I'm not sure what Monday that was, said it was buying Hess for $53 billion in stock. And this announcement came just weeks after Exxon announced its purchase of this is Shale Rival P- Pioneer Natural Resources for $59.5 billion in an all-stock deal. Okay, so those were the deals being made. And then U.S. Senator Schumer had some problems with that because he said that it seemed to be harming competition or could harm competition. And it could also harm consumers. So I kind of want to deep dive deeper into this topic and kind of understand more what's about this whole thing and what the deals could mean for future. Because I also read that it could kind of be a start of more mega deals to come. So what do you guys say? Or what do you guys think about that? Well, what they're, they're buying up a company. What it is is Exxon and Chevron are buying up other companies. So it's, it's what any other corporation does is that you, you, as you're, expanding into different markets or trying to expand the portfolio of products or services that you offer, uh, you have your option of either starting a new company and building up from there or acquiring somebody. In this case, both Chevron and Exxon decided to acquire different companies. What uh, the senator was looking at doing is saying FTC at least take a look at this to see is this a monopoly? Now the deal uh, about a monopoly is that there is a company that is so large uh, and dominates so much of the market and has so much of the market share that smaller players it's an unfair advantage to that. And so that's what he's uh, saying in this case. Now, the issue there too is what would fund Exxon and Chevron in this case, the ability to buy those companies is the fact that oil prices have basically skyrocketed over the last three years. And with that, they, because of that, it has generated enormous amounts of profit part of the scenario okay and so with those profits they're able to buy other companies and when they do that then it makes their position that much stronger because they're a bigger company so all he's doing is he's asking the ftc to take a look at this um i don't i i i'm not sure right now if this is a uh really a political issue or not it just it seems interesting that Senator Schumer and they make a point of saying other Democrats have signed on to the letter to say for the FTC, you need to look at this or investigate it. <clears throat> I, I'm unaware of this being a political issue. So I, I, uh, you know, it, it, it's, we'll just have to see what's going on from this. I have not seen what the impact would be, but in both companies, what this does is that it expands both Exxon and Chevron's abilities for 
oil that would then of companies that would generate you know oil products that would then be imported into the U.S. So it expands instead of mining it in or or uh, not mining it, but uh, you know getting uh, generating oil products. And when uh, these are uh, other areas where they would just uh, they're being uh, produced and then imported into the U.S. So the, the the question comes into play is does this give them an unfair advantage to keep prices artificially inflated? Hey, folks, we've got a uh, listener show coming up, and we need you to be on our panel. We're actually going to make this our our year in or one of our year-end wrap-up shows, and uh, we really, really would like to hear from you. Please uh, let us know via LinkedIn and uh, uh, express your interest in that, and we're going to reach out to you so that we uh, can get you on our show. November 10th at 11 a.m. Central. We'd like to have you on our show. Well, I think they should lower the prices, no? Or like, could it lower the prices? Well, I mean, technically they can, but it doesn't mean they're going to because now they have a monopoly or a potential monopoly, which gives them the power to pretty much lame their own price. You know, so that's that's what Andy's trying to say here. Right. See, why? Here, here's the thing is that <clears throat> why would you see prices come down? It's due to competition. You, hey, I'm going to charge you, let's say, a hundred dollars a barrel. I'm just, you know, it's more than that, it's less than that, whatever. So let's say I'm going to charge you a hundred dollars a barrel. If there is no competition out there, he's like, you know what? I'm going to up that to a hundred and fifty dollars a barrel. And now all of a sudden, you have another country that comes in and says, okay, we're going to produce oil and when it, hey we'll sell it to you for 125 oh well now all of a sudden you lose market share so what are you going to do well i'll sell it to you for 115 now it's down 100 or whatever or i'll sell it to you for 80 the point being is competition is what allows for a more competitive so thank god we talked about this one and we'll have to monitor that but article two and it's funny because when I read this, there was, you know, there's been so much going on with weapons around the United States and recent activities that, um, tragic activities that are just so sad. So right when I read the, the headline, I thought of something. My mind went somewhere else, like to, you know, our daily lives. But I guess it's not really that kind of halt. So it says U.S. halts ex. And its exports. So U.S. halts exports of most civilian firearms for 90 days. So we're continuing with a bang here. No pun intended. <laughs> I had written that down. I'm like, there's a pun. Okay. But anyways. <laughs> anyways. So um, I, I would think this is one of our biggest stories as I heard one of our trade experts talk about this. But I just want to gain more knowledge about it and kind of what you guys think about it and how will it affect businesses here? And do you think this is a just to fight halt for three months, like for security reasons, do you think it's necessary? Well, it's, it's a scenario where the government doing that and the department of commerce doing that as far as not issuing licenses, to individuals, non-government entities, to export firearms and ammunition. So the the objective there is there's something that has happened. Chances are it's tied to the Palestinian-Israeli uh, war. But they say it's not. It's could not. Be the that's Russian not limited. Ukraine. They said it's not limited with the Israel. It doesn't have anything to do with. No, but they do. They do cite those as as a primary reason, though. I mean, it, it very specifically says, including Ukraine, Israel, and uh, the Gaza. You know. Oh, okay. Then I misread that because I thought that's uh, so. So what it's doing is individuals. Yeah, they're they're trying to cut down on individuals that are trying to intervene. Add to the problems that would create problems in there. And that's what it is. If there are shipments 
of ammunition and you know weapons going from a to a government entity uh, out there that that is still allowed for. It's for individuals and things of that and non government uh, uses. Oh, because yeah, I understand what you're saying now, but it's because this is what I read: export licenses for Ukraine and Israel, as well as some other close allies, which I should have considered the world allies, will be exempted from the temporary halt in exports. Also very controversial, I have to say, but again, yeah. So, so you guys, so this is like something routine basically, or something that we're just preventing for security reasons, correct? Well, in this case, yes. I mean, it, it's just pretty much to avoid. And, and, and if you read the article carefully, it's actually very specific in saying most civilian firearms and ammunition, you know, like handguns and rifles and stuff like they're not talking about the big semi-automatic or automatic weapons that the government and or any manufacturer sells to military and all that. So, I mean, for obvious reasons, because obviously a citizen in another country normally doesn't buy that off the store, off the shelf, you know. Well, and and, and the other thing is where this, you know, talking about the impact that's going to be along the lines of like uh, people that have maybe hunting trips to different areas. Well, guess what? You're now not going to be able to take your, you know, uh, take your weapon uh, to to go do hunting and stuff like that. Um, so that's where that would come into play. Well, how about right? We even stop if you're like them? crossing the border here, here, here in El Paso, there's a lot of hunters that like to go into Mexico. And do hunting, and of course they take their own weapons. So, so that 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 could affect them, um, you know. So it's just basically that's that that's the impact of it. And 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 and, and of course the U.S. manufacturers that that manufacture that's those weapons going, yeah. are are affected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, well, how are they affected? Well, they just can't. <laughs> they Make can any. apply for licenses. It says. Yeah, they, well, they're 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 gonna make them. I mean, believe me, there's always a demand for it. But they they're they're they they <laughs> can is. apply for the license. <laughs> they just won't be granted the license, you know, at least for the next ninety days. But they can get in line from now, you know. But the biggest ones that are affected are the U.S. manufacturers, like like Ruger, uh, I guess Smith and Smith and Wesson. You know, those are those are two of the bigger uh, manufacturers here in in the U.S. that that ship uh, firearms. Um, civilian firearms um abroad so it, it will be affecting them they, they just can't ship them out anymore if it's for civilian use again remember that because there's that same that same nine millimeter could be used as a sidearm for uh military and and police uh abroad and and those they'll still sell it to them yeah well Maybe we should stop selling them overall, but just <laughs> that's not possible. And that's a whole different topic we don't want to get into. Anyways, um, then we have one last article. I guess this explains the article. I, I, I understand that pretty well now. And, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. And OK, anyways, moving on. Panama Canal will will slash ship crossing again due to drought. Can't say that word, but we're just going to, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> drought. <laughs> drought. Drought. <laughs> well, we've talked about this topic probably like three times and it's still coming up in the news. I promise I'm not taking this from four weeks ago or like two months ago. This is still coming up in the news because things are getting a little bit um, tricky here. So now we're down to 25 daily passage authorizations and they say that in February, it'll be down to 18, February 2024. So that's a that's just such a crazy amount, especially if you know what the number was before. I think it was at 35 at some point and, you know, that already lowered. So now all these business or businesses that want to get their products in, I mean, they're going to have to reroute, right? <laughs> Well, well, here's the thing is that for folks, this is for the Panama Canal. There is a drought down there that we've talked about. It is still going on. But here's the other thing is that in that is that for planning purposes, for routing your freight through and, and whatnot, um, 
you'll have to look to see, and I, I'm not sure of the frequency of, of what the backup is right now of uh, ships moving through there. But here's the, the issue is that the rain um, fall during the, uh, the month and, and whatnot, like in November, it's averages normally 20 inches, almost 21 inches, but that's about it. But then it drops in December, January, February, and March are the lowest rainfall amounts where there's less than five inches of rain for the month. And we're talking about the month, all right? February is the lowest month of all. So the point being is that that's where they're trying to go. In, in April, it starts, uh, you know, raining a little bit more. And then May, it starts picking back up. So May through October, or eight, actually May through November is when they have some decent rain. The point being is that with with everything going on is that the frequency of if you have freight moving on cargo ships moving through the Panama Canal either direction uh, you just need to be aware that you may need to be looking at alternate routes due to the uh, backup of the the canal or you're just going to be sitting there in line and see what the backup is there and, and losing money to make your way through mm. That's just like so. money sitting on the canal. Yeah. If it's coming from the far east, I mean, here, here's where the scenario is. All right. So what are the alternatives? If you've got a, a cargo ship coming from the far east, you need to – and then you've got cargo that basically when they cut through the Panama Canal – they're coming up and either they'll hit, uh, you know, some of the Gulf ports. Maybe they'll go all the way around to the Eastern seaboard and whatnot. So they're looking at uh, a scenario of maybe going to the West, Western ports and then by rail do a multimodal and move, by rail move those containers across country. There's that option. Uh, if you are trying to go from the Far East and cut all the way through, and then you normally take the Panama Canal all, all the way on to Europe, whatever, you may need to be looking at going the reverse route and, and hitting, uh, the other continents from the back end side of, uh, the, you know, around, uh, uh, the other side of the, the world there. So anyway. I'm sitting here rambling. I'm sorry. It, it's just basically Panama Canal is uh, more and more backup. So be aware of that. Exactly. I don't have much more to add to that. I mean, <laughs> all right. Well, that wraps it up. Um, I have two more articles we can link below. One is supply shortage hits infant RSV antibody baby footers, which usually um, babies get them. And so we're at a shortage there. That's pretty interesting. Also kind of sad. And then Canadian workers reach deal to end strike that shut down Great Lake shipping artery. Um, yeah, that was also wild because we've been talking about strikes, but at least they kind of figured it out somehow. So read that down below. Um, there's also many news updates on Global Training Center LinkedIn page. We always post our news there. And obviously in the weekly news roundup, right? Because we give you the three most interesting articles from the week. So that is all we have for you today. Thank you for listening. I just want to mention quickly that we have a free webinar coming up on December 13th, which... <laughs> Which, if you really want to remember what day it is, it's Taylor Swift's birthday also. And so, Oh, my gosh. Listen yeah, to but you. Are a Taylor, that, but, Taylor Swift but I'm fan. Just, <laughs> I'm just letting them know. If you really want to remember the date, remember it that way. And it's at 11 a.m. Central Time. It'll be with Renee. She's our new tra trade expert. She's awesome. And um, it'll be a great way to start 2024 because you'll kind of understand more of 2023. And if you understand what happened in the past and how it impacted things in, in the industry, you'll understand what's going to happen in 2024. So therefore, we're setting you up for success with Renee and it's free. So what are you waiting for? Get on the page. It's www.gtc.trade slash year in review. So there you can just register. It's free again. And yeah, we can't wait to have you there. I'll be there too. So hopefully I can see you guys. 
So that wraps up the show. Thank you guys so much. And thank you most of all for Lalo and Andy for giving me the tea on all things trade and definitely sorted things out for me. Very interesting. Some things, not all things, maybe. But (laughs) But anyways, okay, gotta go. Okay, bye. Have a great week. Thank you very much for joining us. Simply Trade is brought to you by the generous contributions of Global Training Center. You can follow the show and GTC on LinkedIn or Twitter and other social networks. Make sure you check out the show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's show with all the important links. Also, make sure that you share this with a friend and subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. We really like hearing from you. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to rate and review wherever you listen to this podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest in the show or would like to sponsor Simply Trade or suggest any topic you would like for us to discuss, please contact us via email at simplytrade at globaltrainingcenter.com or you can DM us on Twitter at simplytradepod. Thank you again for the privilege of your time. Happy trading. Simply Trade is not a law firm or an advisor. The topics and discussions conducted by Simply Trade hosts and guests should not be considered and is not intended to substitute legal advice. You should seek appropriate counsel for your own situations. These conversations and information are directed towards listeners in the United States for informational, educational, entertainment purposes only and should not be substituted for legal advice. No listener or viewer of this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of information on this podcast without first seeking legal advice from counsel. Information on this podcast may not be up to date depending on the time of publishing and the time of viewership. The content of this posting is provided as is. No representations are made that the content is error free. The views expressed in or through this podcast are those of the individual speakers, not those of their respective employers or Global Training Center as a whole. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the contents of this podcast are hereby expressly disclaimed.